Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and I'm doing another solo video without Geeky Sparkle. She's actually over at the studio trying to get things ready, getting things cleaned up, taking measurements. She's going to geekify the place. If you saw our video yesterday, we are going to be moving over to a new office location so we can hopefully do more more content more live streams uh it's very hard to live stream here now they put a new stoplight in by the house and and it's non-stop trucks day in and day out and in fact uh, a lot of the videos that we record take me quite a while to to scrub the audio because i have to go through and i have to to cut everything out and uh, you guys don't hear that thankfully sometimes you'll hear a little bit of an engine uh here and there where i can't I uh, can't get it, but a lot of times it's literally like every other sentence. So if you hear weird pauses, weird breaks, uh, weird cuts, that's usually where I'm trying to to take out all the damn noise. Um, so we're going to talk about Hollywood. Going to talk about Hollywood and the Oscars. And uh, we haven't talked about this yet. Of course, the Oscars did uh, you know put out some new guidelines, new rules for inclusion to be included in in the nominations for the Oscars, you have to follow the Academy's diversity and inclusion guidelines that uh, you know a lot of people think are draconian, Orwellian, and a lot of celebrities even now are coming out and questioning whether or not this is a good idea to design movies by committee. Uh, I don't think it's a very good idea. I, I think that there's there's definitely room for all kinds of stories to be told in movies and on TV, but to force people force people to have a certain number of a certain kinds of people in their movies to even be considered for an Oscar is going to have a, a huge pushback, I think, from creatives, not because they're racist, but because it, it affects storytelling at that point. It is movies uh, designed by committee, and this is the way the entertainment industry has been for the last couple years now. Everything is designed by committee. This is why so many cartoon shows right now, when when you see things like High Guardian Spice, the Crunchyroll's doing High Guardian Spice and they're promoting it as being a diverse show by diverse people without showing you any actual animation or really even telling you much about the story, you know that things are going a little too far. Again, that's not a knock against more diverse stories it's just that the the quota the orwellian quota as some new uh outlets are calling it it's it's actually gonna hurt the entertainment industry which is already hurting the reason i had this picture pulled up was that california is on fire and i grew up bouncing between northern california and pennsylvania for most of my childhood so i spent a, almost as much time in california as i did in pennsylvania and, uh, you know, it's kind of heartbreaking to see this, but I have not been to California for any length of time for about 20 years now. I left uh, right after school and I've been out there a couple times for business, been out there for vacation, but I haven't lived out there for quite some time. I still have friends out there. Uh, they tell me it's pretty bad. California is actually uh, uh, not the same place it was when I lived there. And we're going to talk about Hollywood and centralization. I talked a little bit about this the other day. And I think that this relates to the Oscars. Because I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a breaking point. Where you're going to have more independent creators, more artists who don't want to be told what to do, break away from the Hollywood system. And by the Oscars requiring that you have a certain quota that needs to be met, they're actually just helping themselves become more obsolete quicker, faster, that people are going to go find some other alternatives. And I think we're going to see a, a renaissance in indie content out of necessity because the Hollywood system is broken. Uh, everything has been centralized in L.A. for quite some time. Now, this is San Francisco, not L.A., but still, um, everything is and has been centralized in a town that's going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, that people are leaving California in droves, and I think this needs to happen. I think it's 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 sort of like, uh, you know, since everybody's talking about Dune now, it's sort of like the God Emperor of Dune. Things have to become so terrible that everybody scatters across the country. So it reminds us never to centralize the entertainment industry in one place, because this is how things like the, the Oscars Orwellian diversity quota 
happens. We have so many like-minded people making all the decisions for an entire industry. You know, the New York Post, multiple articles, multiple opinion articles on the woke quota backfiring on Hollywood, how it's going to backfire. Yeah, people aren't watching the Oscars. People don't trust Hollywood. You know what? People are moving on from Hollywood productions. Hollywood is hurting right now. So, of course, what's it going to do? It's going to double down, triple down on their political agenda and it's not going to go the way they think it's going to go people are just going to go elsewhere and i do really believe that we're going to see more pockets of of entertainment companies pop up in other locations around the country outside of la because it's no longer necessary i think we're going to have uh, you know people uh, go to texas people go to florida uh, people go to the midwest and set up shop and produce entertainment in those locations. They don't need to be in LA anymore. They don't need to, to be in this system anymore. They don't need to play by these rules because the rules are getting ridiculous. Again, I am all for every kind of story being told, but you can't tell artists what they can and can't do. This sounds very Orwellian. This sounds like something the CCP would do. <laughs> you know, this does not sound like an American merit-based entertainment industry, and it hasn't been for quite some time. It's just that we're seeing firsthand, uh, I guess, what the end goal is here, what their end game was, that uh, now that everything is burning, now that it's burning, you know, we have nothing left to lose. You know, we, we don't have anything left to lose. Let's just let's just push it on through and just be like, these are the kinds of movies you will make or else. Uh, so this is coming from the New York Post. We're going to talk about some other pushback. Even Yahoo. Yahoo is pushing back against this. Uh, Oscars Orwellian diversity quota throws out merit, says Miranda Devine. Devine. Uh, there go the Oscars. Forget merit. Now filmmakers will have to, su have to subject their art to Orwellian tests of identitarian purity if it is to be eligible for a Best Picture award. In the latest act of craven capitulation to the Antifa mob, the Academy Mo of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences decreed Tuesday that no movie can win the top award unless it satisfies a set of genetically and sexually diverse quotas. And you can read about that. I'll talk a little bit about what the actual quotas are here in a few minutes. For example, lead actors must be from an underrepresented racial or ethnic group. Asian, Latinx, Black, Native American, Middle Eastern, Native Hawaiian, or other Pacific Islander. Anything but white. Anything but white. At least 30% of the rest of the cast otherwise must be chosen from at least two of the following victim identities. Uh, this is her words, not mine. Women, underrepresented racial or ethnic group, LGBTQ+, and the disabled. Or the Academy gets to dictate the content of the movie so that the main storyline, theme, or narrative of the film must satisfy the same intersectionality requirements on gender, race, sexuality, and disability. This is what's going on in uh, the animation industry right now, right? It's not the Academy Awards, but but to, to get a show picked up, even though it's not on paper, as far as I'm aware of, this is what they look at when they pick up a series. This is why you see so many of the same kinds of creators getting picked up for shows. This is why they push identitarian politics over content, over plot a lot of times, because that was the focus. That was the focus all along was to find the right voices and, oh, if they can run a show, great, great. But we can we can deal with that later. First, let's find the right kinds of people uh, to meet this quota. And it's been going on for comics for at least five or six years now. Yeah, it was all about hiring the right kinds of people. So now we're going to drop the facade and we're going to put it on paper and say, this is what must happen if you want to work in this system. Everybody knew on the down low, this is kind of, kind of, sort of what was going on. But now we explicitly have it written down on paper. So now you don't have to guess anymore. This is what you have to do if you want to if you want to have your, your movie nominated for Best Picture. It reads like satire. You have to pinch yourself to make sure you're not having some dystopian dream. Dystopian dream right here. California dreaming right here. Right here. Even to be considered for a Best Picture Oscar, a movie must satisfy two of the four required standards. Can't just be good. It can't just be a good movie. Standard B demands at least two creative leadership positions, such as director, producer, writer, or cinematographer, must come from a designated victim identity category, 
with at least one from a favored racial or ethnic group. Otherwise, at least 30% of the film crew must satisfy the same politically correct criteria. Standard C requires substantive paid internships and apprenticeships in most departments solely for people from designated victim categories. Standard D reaches its tentacles in the marketing, publicity, and distribution that are also required to be genetically and sexually diverse. White hetero cisgendered, as in haven't changed sex, males need not apply, or at least not without filmmaking, uh, without the filmmaker paying hefty indulgences to the church of woke. This is enforced self-censorship. As destructive of creativity and free thought as the Stalinist dictates of any communist dictatorship. Thank you. Yes, the parallels are not going unnoticed. It's not surprising that it comes from an industry of insiders who mandated unconscious bias anti-racist training in June for all Academy governors and staff, a mass indoctrination that would rot even the most independent mind. Look at Noelle Stevenson. We talked about her the other day. she showrunner Noelle Stevenson made a joke uh, during a live stream, talked about kind of a, um, an in-joke that they had, you know, uh, behind the scenes working on the show where she said that Bo had a brother named So who was a farmer, except she said he was working in the fields or something like that. People took that to mean that she was being a racist and she still continues to apologize day after day, talking about how she's going to go get retrained. She's gonna go get re-educated. Are they gonna send her to Xinjiang? Is that where they're gonna send her? Uh, to get her to, to, to be retrained? I mean, has, has the CCP rubbed off on Hollywood in all the wrong ways. I'm telling you, this is this is nuts. Uh, the press release summarizing the Academy's new strictures to take effect beginning in 2024 required 1,000 words to explain. So now you have to write, write an essay too, I guess. Uh, not one word about artistic quality or God forbid, ideological diversity. Imagine layering these tyrannical dictates atop the already wickedly challenging task of finding and financing a worthwhile project that will find significantly large audiences to make a profit. Movie making is fickle and the best of times. During the pandemic, revenues have collapsed and the logistics of getting up and running are daunting. Now Hollywood is volunteering to shoot itself in the foot while on its knees. Thank you. Uh, tellingly, there has been little complaint about the Academy Edict from the embattled community of film artists who can't afford to be blacklisted if they object. Of course not. They, they can't afford to. The, again, this is why Noelle Stevenson apologizes every damn day. Every day and talks about her re-education she's going to get, her, her training, her sensitivity readers, all of this. These are the people, these communists, basically, have, have been in the entertainment industry for uh, a number of years, right? Because it's a large platform. You can broadcast your beliefs to a, a large number of people. You can have very few people influencing a large number of people and actually get paid to do it. Okay, so Christy Alley, Christy Alley came out and said, uh, she's one of the few brave enough to tell the truth, tweeting that the new rules were, were dictatorial and anti-artist. Uh, Yahoo actually came out and said, this is bullshit. It's patronizing. It's patronizing. You know, there are some other people that came out too. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Christy Alley. Again, this is coming from Yahoo. Um, this is a disgrace to artists everywhere, she said. Can you imagine telling Picasso what had to be in his fucking paintings? You people have lost your minds. Control artists, control individual thought. Oscar Orwell, she tweeted on Tuesday. Holy shit. Um, she's not wrong. Diversity and inclusion should be taught, taught so well and so naturally and genuinely that becomes second nature to our kids. But I ask you to explore my record of diversity and inclusion in anything I produced and throughout my life. I'm not perfect, but fought for human and civil rights for 50 years. I don't just agree with mandated impossible to police quotas as a prerequisite for a best picture. Uh, I don't feel a desperate need to defend myself, but sometimes it's important to go on record with your own history, especially since people aren't aware of our track records. Understanding is my goal. It leads to change. Uh, so she backtracked on Wednesday, though, of course. I'm sure she got a talking to. This happens in comics, too. I can I can testify to this. Uh, when we started giving Comicsgate the benefit of the doubt, I started getting people coming to me with concerns. People that 
I haven't heard from in years. People who I don't associate with on, on a regular basis. People I haven't heard from in years. They came crawling out of the woodwork like a bunch of fucking maggots to tell me to stop doing what I was doing. And we've said before, we're not Comicsgate, uh, but I was giving Comicsgate the benefit of the doubt. And I was being told through the grapevine that that would stop or I would be shunned and I'd, I'd, I'd lose my chance to work in comics. Well, fuck comics. Uh, comics doesn't pay. Comics is a one-way path to uh, living in a cardboard box unless you do it yourself because it's not working. So I really had nothing to lose, right? I was like, whatever. I don't really give a shit. And you're not going to tell me what to do. But somebody, somebody came to her and uh, and told her if she ever wanted to work in this town again. I deleted my first tweet about the new rules for best movie Oscars because I feel it was a poor analogy and I misrepresented my viewpoint. I'm 100% behind diversity and inclusion and tolerance. I'm opposed to manda mandated arbitrary percentages. Uh, mandated arbitrary percentages relating to hiring human beings in any business. Uh, James Woods, of course, not on board. Uh, Dean Cain, of course, not on board. You know, um, yeah, this is uh, this is scary. This is scary, guys, because it's 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 this is a slippery slope. What's going to happen then is we're going to have movies designed. I mean, they're already designed by committee, but now it's going to be movies designed to appeal to some uh, board diversity and inclusion board. And this is kind of what happened to comics. There wasn't a formal board, but it was understood that you had to please uh, the Karens in the Women in Comics Facebook group if you wanted to break into comics, right? Groups like that. Uh, the editors all chit-chat together and are, are freshly uh, uh, out of college with their gender studies degrees, you know, and uh, they, they all think, all these white ladies, <laughs> they all think that they have it all figured out, right? So here Sonny Bunch is like, allowing behind the scenes efforts to take place on on-screen representation is a huge boom for filmmakers. If you're directing a prestige picture for Warner Brothers or Universal, you'll never have to worry about any of this. Someone somewhere will make sure you have the proper number of represented interns. If you're an indie putting together a movie on a shoestring, well, good luck. Uh, good luck with that. A lot of people said it's just lip service anyway. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Um, the emphasis on diversity will have an impact. You know, if the rules are weak, the rules are weak. The rules would be more effective if they applied to on-screen and top production roles only. The new standards will hinder the art of filmmaking, said the New York Post. The new rules will help improve diversity among the next generation of filmmakers. Um, you know, and again, I want to restate. I'm, I'm kind of with uh, Kirstie Alley on this one. I am all for diversity and inclusion. I think, I think uh, people should be given the opportunities to pursue their dreams as long as they have the talent to do so what what could potentially and what will probably happen is just like comics and animation and in some cases gaming is we're going to have people that are basically diversity quota hires who really aren't capable of doing the work they're just doing it because the studios are being told they have to hire xyz kind of person and it's going to hurt the industry uh long term uh, I am all for, again, finding and cultivating legit talent, regardless of their gender, regardless of their sexual identity, regardless of the color of their skin. I think that is something we should be doing. But to force quotas like this, there's going to be a lot of pushback. And this is just, you know, and this is it. Kirstie Alley, she's being threatened, basically, I think. Okay, you'll never work in this town again. That's the problem. That's the problem. The entertainment industry needs to be broken up and it needs to exist in multiple places because California and New York should not dictate what the rest of the country reads and watches and enjoys. And it needs to change. This needs to change. The entertainment industry needs to be broken up. It needs to go out and, and have multiple towns. Well, you can't work in LA. That's okay. Kirstie Alley, uh, we'll hire you in, in uh, Nebraska. We'll hire you in the Florida, Florida entertainment industry. You can come down to Texas and work. You can go, you can go to Hawaii. We've got a great setup in Hawaii. Kirstie Alley does Hawaii. It's okay if LA won't work with you because there are multiple entertainment industries, pockets of people producing content, and it's easier than ever before. I think this needs to happen. Hollywood needs to learn a very painful lesson, and I think this is sort of like uh, Dune, where things are so awful that uh, the human race scatters 
and they go elsewhere and they never centralize again so they can survive. And that's what needs to happen to the entertainment industry. I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk to you guys later.